You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Mob Wives After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Mob Wives After Show. episode here at After Buzz, Mob Wives, Season 4, Episode 9, Purgatory. I am your host, Erica Garcia Rojas, and I am joined here in the studio by two very lovely ladies. Hey, <laughs> Introduce yourself, girls. <laughs> I'm Charlotte Proben. What's up, guys? And I'm Roxy Stryer. <laughs> Yay! And so all three of us are in the house right now to dish and talk about your favorite housewives, the mob wives. So what do you guys think about this episode? I think that it was entertaining enough, but obviously not the big event of the season. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I love the characters that I don't even really care sometimes. I just love looking at them <laughs> like, what is going on? Especially this episode with other costumes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they had the costumes were good. They were spot on for all of them. Each of them had their own little way of and that, like yeah, talking about themselves with through a costume. I think it was very like you if you heard about those four costumes, you could have placed them to the four women. That's what I was trying yeah. to say. Yeah. I think this episode Team. was like one of those like like we talked about like a filler episode for sure. It was just like a transitional episode. Yeah, it's the, hard when there's real life drama because you know, like things on TV shows, they get wrapped up very quickly mm -hmm. on scripted shows. But in reality TV, just like in our real lives, things don't actually get wrapped up that quickly. So you know, one problem, the, if you're having it one week, you're probably still having it the next week, yeah. which happens all the time in life. You know, if if you're pissed at a friend, the next episode, you're not necessarily okay. Oh, right, yeah. So I think that's why we've already heard this stuff, you know, and then we've heard it again, and then now we're hearing it again, again. Well, so. and these women are unique in the sense they never let anything go. They never, like, move on from anything ever. Like, especially Renee. Like, she just... I feel like she continues, like, this whole drama with Natalie, and it, she just doesn't let it go. Yeah. It's Seriously, like, like, last week we said, finally, it's not about the Natalie and Renee drama that's kind of not as big of real-life drama. It's, you know, and... But now it's back to kind of she wouldn't go to the party because of that. Yeah. It's like... Okay, like Natalie said, let bygones be bygones. I feel like life would be very difficult if I was like one of these women where I <laughs> let nothing go. You know, like my head would hurt all the time. Like, it's hard to keep track of. I hate this person and this person, but that person hates me. And this, like, what? <laughs> you know, like, I just, I don't really hate anybody. I hope nobody really hates me. And th that's my life. So I, I it's not too hard to keep track of. I love your glasses. So, Thank I mean, you. There we go. Well, we'll share the love here. That. <laughs> I sure that. that it's like, it's just like, I don't know if they're trying to find something to do or whatever. It's just like, but to have so much negativity towards other people, it's just mm -hmm. like, oh my God, get over it. So, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the episode. So, uh, we see it, at, it starts off, there's a, the pumpkin patch, they're there hanging out. It seems like forever. Yeah, um, that really did seem like forever. <laughs> I, was, I will say that. I mean, like, we were at the okay. pumpkin patch for 20 minutes. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And what are they doing going to a pumpkin patch? I mean... Uh, honestly, it was because Natalie wanted to spook them out because she's scared of nothing because obviously she works at a funeral home. Yeah. She's like, I touch dead bodies all day. What are you going to do to scare me? Yeah. Um, but, but the things inside were not that scary, but the women seemed scared. No, it didn't seem scary at all. It just seemed gruesome. It was just, just like, kind of gross. Yeah, just almost yeah more dirty just mm -hmm. like oh what is that oh why is it so dirty yeah, <laughs> yeah. well i don't know I guess you want to introduce them to her world of uh, and tell us that it was halloween yeah yeah which i know i know roxy had issues with this yeah okay so we know that they're not filming this in real time i get it and i'm glad they weren't pretending that this was a valentine's day party yeah. instead 
I don't know. Sometimes it works. Like when we had um, Sandy, you know, and San Hurricane Sandy, and we we're seeing it a few months later, it's like still such a huge deal that I was okay with it. But events like this, it's Halloween. And I'm like, we're almost in February. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really care about Halloween anymore. As opposed to, obviously, if this was in October, I'd be like, oh my God, what is everybody wearing? This is yeah. so exciting. Uh, and it just takes me out of the fact I'm I'm thinking about reality TV, and we follow these people on Twitter. They're they're in such a different place now, so it's difficult. Yeah, I don't really like it either, and I feel that a lot of times in reality shows they'll try and not make it seasonal in a way. Right. I mean, you can't you can't help the weather or what they're, they're wearing when it comes to being, say, you know, in the summer or winter, but you can't avoid having to really make it seem like a, like it is a holiday, like Halloween or whatever. And maybe the reason they did this is because she had a Halloween party and, you know, that that was the only thing. But They could have shown it, though, as a d fancy dress party. Yeah, you know, a costume party. A costume, costume party. party. Yeah. Yeah, it's not even, I don't, it's not that I wish they lied about it. I don't really know what the alternative is. I just know you it's frustrating. You just don't it like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't really yeah. like it either. So, okay, so at this pumpkin patch, the whole thing, thing goes down where Natalie says she has a party and all that and then she says she's gonna you know extend the invitation to Renee um, and then she calls her do you guys think that Natalie's invitation was sincere I think she was sincerely inviting her but I don't think it was sincere <laughs> you know like I, she was honestly inviting her mm -hmm. like it wasn't like a fake invite it was no, a real no, invite I, yeah I mean, but like, I don't think she sincerely wanted her to come mm -hmm. It was, I thought it was interesting when Alicia said in the confessional when she was by herself, I think it's a really good thing for Natalie to invite her to kind of squash everything and show that she's the bigger person. And I was like, I didn't really know how I felt about Alicia saying that, the fact that she's already, they've got problems, her and Renee have problems herself. And I was just like, mm, this seems a little forced. Yeah. yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, I'm the bigger person. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're even thinking that, you're not the bigger person, <laughs> you know? That makes you the smaller person. So I, I didn't really think that this was genuine. I feel like... Uh, especially because she said, I'm with the girls, and, you know, if she really wanted to invite her, maybe when you get home, call her and be like, hey, I've been thinking about this, and I'd really appreciate it mm -hmm. if you came to my Halloween party. I know Vegas was rocky, but I want to see you. And, you know, That would have been yeah. a sincere invitation. I think the way she did, she just called right there, I'm with the girls. I'm on da, da, da. It's like, <laughs> really? It's like, and I think Renee said something that resonated pretty true to me, is that she's like, it just seems like Natalie's just putting on the show to make it seem like I'm the better person. I'll do it. To get all the girls on her side and be like, oh, look at Natalie. Natalie's, you know, extending the invitation. And even Drita said, well, the ball is in Renee's court now, you know. Right. And I totally agree with that, especially the way that she asked it. Like, exactly, Roxy, like you said, like, hey, I'm with the girls, da, da, da. It's like, no, if you would have, put, you know, done it in private, more sincere, you or know. Or even just not said with the girls. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of like, I'm with your friends and yeah, but, you're not here. Mm -hmm. I know I am, like, flip-flopping back and forth between whose team I'm on and who I think is being genuine and maybe it's because I talked to Renee last week so I'm a little yeah. biased about it but I'm really team Renee right now I felt like she was being the one who was sincere here and when you go over to team Natalie team Alicia I, I think that we're not getting the whole story there you know I, I don't think we're seeing everything I think that there are more skeletons in the closet that we don't know about oh I think Maybe not so much with the situation between Renee and Natalie. That seems pretty yeah. black and white, but I think definitely the situation with Renee and Alicia, there's so much history there, and there's so much that we don't know, and there's only certain things that are being revealed to us. And, like, we know this when it comes to reality shows. The producers kind of pick and choose what's revealed to us, so mm -hmm. unless you dig deep and go in there in the Internet and just research all of it, we don't know the whole story. Or even if you do that, sometimes you I know. don't know. I know. So. You don't know what's, what's true, what's not. But, yeah, I agree. It's hard to tell... It's hard to tell with the situation. I, I don't really have a definitive answer yet when it comes to Renee versus Alicia because I just feel like I don't know. Well, luckily, we don't have to pick teams because we view the show, so we're, we're not in their group yeah, of friends. I know. But if, if we were, if we were Drita and Big Ange, that's a <laughs> tough position, man. They're doing really well at staying in neutral. Mm -hmm. Really well. And I'm surprised. I mean, we saw a little bit at the end of the episode, but I'm surprised Renee is staying so cool and being okay with Drita and Ange not really sticking up for her. 
Uh, I don't think she's actually cool. You yeah. Know, very much so. The way that this is going down reminds me of high school. You know, you want your friends to have your back right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're just wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a tough position. And especially the way that Natalie went about it, saying, with, I'm with the girls. They're not your girls. Yeah. You mm -hmm. just met them. Yeah. And you only know them because Renee introduced you to them. Mm -hmm. You know, Renee is the one who brought in. Well, Natalie's offense. She didn't say my girls. She said the girls. I know. She said the girls. You know? but And still, it's like, and they're on a show together. So it's the girls that are we're filming together. So in some ways, it, it, I, I, don't know. I I know, but it was even though she didn't say my, it seemed a little territorial to me, mm -hmm. and that's something that would definitely piss me off mm -hmm. from Renee. Um, I do agree that she's keeping her cool better than I thought she would with the fact that Drita and Ange are going to the party and are still seeing these girls outside, you know. Uh, usually I think that Renee is such like a hothead, she'd be like, no, screw this, you know. I'm mm -hmm. like, you guys are supposed to be my friends, choose. Yeah. And she's not doing that, but I think inside she is, and I think she's definitely telling Nicole all about it, who yeah, is her yeah. other friend yeah. who... I don't even know much yeah, about her. Yeah, she just comes in. She's like Renee's sounding board when nobody else wants to be there with her. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, okay, so the then. AJ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, moving on, we see a little bit of AJ in this episode. Um, and, you know, Renee's talking to AJ about his girlfriend. It looks like things are a little bit more serious with her. And he's only 19, and he's talking about moving out and moving in with his he would, girlfriend. He would correct you and say, almost 20. Almost 20. That's right. He's 19, almost 20. Because typically when you are 19, you are yeah. almost 20. Yeah. Yeah. And in, at that age, it's like a huge deal. I like, know it Okay, is. I'm out of the teens. I like, know. I'm going into my 20s. I'm almost, and that means I'm almost 21. <laughs> yeah. That means I'm legally to drink. So, um, What do you think about that, that scene with Renee and, and AJ? I think it's too, I, I don't know, like, I, I don't think it's too young to live by yourself. I mean, I moved out at 17, mm -hmm. but to move in with a boyfriend or girlfriend, personally, I think that's is a little too young. Because, like Renee said, these days, when you get married young, it I don't think it's the best thing either, because the divorce rate is so high. Mm -hmm. I think it could be a mistake, but it's a mistake that he has to make on his own. Mm -hmm. You know, like, who am I to judge? You guys can't move in together. There are plenty of couples who have moved in together that age and made it, and there are plenty of them who have not. Um, I think that they've been, at least they didn't just start dating this week. I know they've been dating for a good amount of time, mm -hmm. and will it crash and burn? Perhaps. But that's not our call, you know? Yeah. And it's not really his mom's call anymore unless she's financially supporting him, and then it is. I think I think they're too young. <laughs> I'll just say. I think they're too young. Um, I think that he's a young guy where he can have a girlfriend, but just moving in at that age, 19, it just makes things so much complicated. He might end up in a relationship that maybe w wasn't good, wasn't right for either party, and then they're in it too long. And at that age, it's like... Why, why do you need to play house or be in that situation when you're only 19? Right. Especially if I were his older sister, or, you know, or whatever, like, I'd say, dude, no. Don't tie yourself down. Have the girlfriend, but don't live with her. You're 19. That's so young. Like, yeah. live I mean, a little. I'm like, not go much out. older than he is, and I would never do that right now, ever. I never did but, it. But to each their own, you know? Yeah. Like, maybe it is the right move for him, and I just don't feel like I know their relationship enough yeah. to judge. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel. I'll judge. I don't think they should. <laughs> well, you go right ahead because I place judgments on plenty of things. Don't even I don't worry. think they do. I, I don't think they should. I think they're too young. But okay. Um, so now we, from that, we see kind of a fun scene between Drita and Method Man, which watching so it, cool. I thought it was such a cool scene. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I know last week we talked a little bit about her rapping and all that. And Mad Man rapping. Oh, well. <laughs> Char Char Charlotte here um, will we'll reveal that she, who was that that was rapping? It, Mad I Man. think it's Mad Men. <laughs> well, we'll excuse her because she's going to uh, play the foreign card. Yeah. She's not from you do this that, country. You do that. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I know I was last week saying that, that Drita's rapping was kind of funny. It was just funny to see her do it. But I think this this week was cool. She was a little more, I don't know, relaxed. But it was a lot of fun to see the interaction between her and Method Man. Yeah, this was just actually something that I enjoyed watching. Yeah, I like seeing the collaborative process, mm -hmm. and I, I really enjoyed it. I think it's so fascinating when celebrities have their celebrity role model or crush yeah. or whatever it is because... In, in non-celebrity worlds, we kind of all just, like, assume, oh, if Drita wants to meet somebody, she just meets yeah. him, you yeah. know, like, calls up 
Method Man, hey, yeah. what's up? Do you want to meet? You know? Well, know actually, that sounds... that's probably what ended up happening in this situation in some, you know, way, shape, or form. Yeah, the Anthony, know? the yeah. Uh, yeah. producer, probably called yeah. him, whatever, and was like, this is Dorita. From... I'm just saying, it's funny because she was honestly so excited, know. you know? Genuinely. You know, and she's a celebrity, mm -hmm. and it's not for her the start of it. It's that she actually thinks this person is talented mm -hmm. and yeah. really likes him, you know? And that's so cool to watch. I know, it was cool. And I loved watching, like, her kind of struggling and stuff, and him, him, like, being like, okay, stop, that wasn't good, let's fix it, let's work on it. And it was just awesome to see him hope and, and just see him do his thing, what he was really good at, you know? And and then the two of them just working together. I, I love that scene. That was fun to watch. Yeah, it was really cool how he was helping her, and she was really, I found it cool on her part that she was really open and like, yeah, this is her idol, but some people would still be, would still not want the help and think, oh, my lyrics are good. But she's she like, change it. Open. Take yeah. the paper. Seriously. Yeah. Was, and that That's was, true. I was like, oh, nice. Like, she's open and She's humble enough yeah. to like, say, hey, I don't know this. You're the the boss here, so. Right, and I yeah. know we didn't get to see the whole thing, but she really was improving and, mm -hmm. you know, as you're saying, he's like, no, listen, you need more words. And she wasn't like bitter about it, like, oh, no, I don't want she, take my paper. Yeah. You fill it out for me. Oh, my God, help me, Method Man, I love you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, the smartest really cool. person in the room is a per person that knows they don't know everything. Yeah, so. definitely. I think she was awesome there in that scene. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> next we see Renee talking to her friend Nicole who um, it looks like they're talking a little bit about the um, invitation from Natalie, how Renee kind of didn't think it was too sincere and all that. Um, and, you know, it's clear to us that Renee is obviously still not over the situation with Natalie. Yeah, I think Nicole gave her some really bad advice, man. She was like, she, she was like, you need to call her and you need to tell her that you are not coming and here is why. Like, doing the most, you yeah. know, like you just, yeah. so Renee is trying to s calm down and bring the situation, not elevate it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it just uh, was really bad advice in my opinion. No, I agree with you. I, I, if I was her friend, I would be like, she, Renee said, I want to text her and say, thank you for inviting mm -hmm. me, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to attend. That's mature. You know, and if I if I heard Renee say that, I would say, okay, that's great. You know, mm -hmm. not just like, what do you mean? Get on that phone. You call her and tell her what's up. I think maybe okay. maybe she was saying, like, well, why text her? Just, just call her. Just give her a call. Just say, hey, you know, I can't go. Thank you for the invitation, but why don't we set up another time? I don't know if but the intention was to as like an attack. She said you should say why uh, it was well, something then, about my goals. Yeah, yeah she was about like, get to yeah. the bottom of this. My goals. Yeah. It was like, yeah, of course a phone call is always more mature than, than, than text. You know, I think then nobody can misread. or And, for example, the text message was misread by both mm -hmm. Drita and Big Ant. That can't happen on the phone. So, uh, yes, the phone call is better, but not the phone call that Nicole was suggesting. No. no. And and what do you think about, you know, the, what she did end up doing with that text? I mean, I think maybe a better solution would have been for her to just say, hey, thank you for the invitation, but I'd rather talk separately at another time as opposed to doing the whole... I think it's a setup, blah, 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 over text. And bringing up the past. Yeah. If you're going to say, let's talk, let's get coffee or whatever it is, then why would you say anything, anything else, more, yeah. you know? Because you're Save trying it for to the say, coffee. Right, I, just exactly what you said is mm -hmm. what I would have said. I don't understand. Um, I'm not completely convinced that when Renee said that, she wasn't talking about Drita and Big I'm Ange. not either. I, that was my next question. Do you think that mm -hmm. she was referring to them? Right, um, that would be the only reason to text something like that, I think, so I'm not completely convinced. Which is strange to me because in last week's episode, I think that the tweets were also about Alicia. Right. And I think so, so too. These, these things and back even to back. in this episode, and I, I remember hearing, um, I think it was Drita, they did reference the fact that Renee was tweeting all yeah. about Alicia. So Drita thinks that the tweets are uh -huh. about her. Right. So those two things back to back are making me a little confused because Renee has always been the person who's like, if I have a problem with I'll you, you'll you. know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she's being a little sneaky right now because mm -hmm. she doesn't, so, you know, she'll start something and then be like, Renee, is this a smart move? No, back down. Yes. Um, so I do, regardless mm -hmm. of whether she was saying it about Drita and Big Ange, I think it was the smarter move to say she wasn't because yeah. that would have been a whole big mm -hmm. to do also. And I think Renee has a tendency to get really, like, caught up in something, really excited, not excited, but just, like, just get emotional about something. 
throw that out there, whether it's the text, the tweets, or whatever. And then, like you said, Roxy, just think about, like, eh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't maybe have. Shouldn't and I, I really do think she was talking about Drita and Big Ange. Mm-hmm. I think she, and, 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 um, Drita said this. Renee was just pissed at the fact that we weren't standing up for her. Right. And I mean, you mentioned this a little bit earlier. Like, it feels like high school where it's like, oh, my friends need to, you know, stand by me no matter what. And and Renee has this this sense of loyalty in the sense that being loyal is being loyal no matter what. Yeah. But. I mean, people have different definitions of friendship. I mean, for me, if I'm really doing something wrong or something stupid, I would want my friends to maybe not not say something in front of everybody. Not ambush you. But, but later on be like, hey, I, I don't agree with you. Like, that's what friends in some ways are for, is to challenge one another. You Absolutely. don't want yes, yes men all the time. But it really thinks that Renee, her definition of loyalty and friendship is like, you stand by me no matter what. Yeah. what. Which in a way, it's, yeah. it's what the women do with the men. You stand by me no matter what. You're, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, Karen's father, whatever. He was all over the place killing people. But she stood by him, loyal to him because he's her father no matter what. So it's like that definition of loyalty and friendship is is um, it's it's a whole different world. What I found women. interesting about that um, the end scene was when Drita said, "I mean, I'm going to stick up for whoever's right in that situation." Mm-hmm. Natalie, everything she said was true. Well, if you think back to that episode, Natalie said, "I mean, she said a lot of things, but she also said that Mob Candy was trash." Yeah, and there was numerous things that Renee would not be happy about if she knew that Drita was agreeing that everything Natalie said was true. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree with that, and I thought that was a little messed up. But I will say, there's a difference between. Her looking at, uh, Drita looking at Natalie and not saying anything about that. Basically, what I'm saying is if Natalie was to be there talking crap and Drita was to be joining in, you know, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know what? She sucks. I hate her. I can't deal with this. That would be one thing. But to be there and kind of just saying, yeah, I agree with you. You know, she wasn't adding fuel to the fire. Exactly. Yeah, they were both taking a back And then she's also not going to Renee and saying, I'm sticking up for Natalie, you know? Mm -hmm. So she's not actually having Natalie's back. She's just not having Renee's back, you know? And so there is a difference. Yeah. Um, It's a small difference. Difference, though, and honestly, as a person, my I try to stand by my friends, right or wrong, and then pull them aside, like mm-hmm. you're saying, and say, "Listen, I just had your back because you're my friend, but I really don't quite yeah. think that you were right." Yeah. Uh, I just don't like the way that any of these women are dealing with the situation right now. Particularly, I I don't think I would have dealt with it like any of them. Mm-hmm. Most similarly to Big Ange and Drita, but still not quite like them. Mm-hmm. No, I'm surprised the way Renee's dealing with this. It's not a mature... And she's very confrontational, and the tweets, and, and it's just not... It's passive. It it's like passive-aggressive. Yeah, it's, I just don't think it fits who she is, and I, I'm finding it kind of strange. Well, yeah. she does bring up the point of how, and I don't know if this has to do with her recovery and sobriety, like how she doesn't want to get into these confrontations again. Mm-hmm. I mean, we even saw it when she got into that confrontation with Natalie in Vegas, like... That was just a lot. And for her, yeah. like, you can even tell part of her was, like, not wanting to and, like, fighting the urge and all that and wanting to walk away. And maybe that's part of it is that she, I don't know, she's trying not to have these kind of conversations. Yeah, but then that text message shouldn't have been sent. Well, and yeah, the but it's passive. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's now turned into more of a passive-aggressive. Because she's not capable of just letting it go, go but she doesn't yeah. want to bring it to the next level. Yeah. So she's yes. the passive-aggressive, which yeah. we don't know her as, and I don't, it's not a good look. Mm-hmm. No. Mm, it's not a good look yeah. for anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay. So then we do see the actual Halloween party where we see the women dressed up in their costumes. Natalie's wearing, like, a thong and, like, a see-through I shirt. I thought she hot. looked amazing. She did yeah, look hot. I thought she looked hot. Yeah. Her eyes were creepy as hell, but. <clears throat> yeah. And Alicia. She looked hot, too. Her yeah. Wonder Woman. I have a soft spot for Wonder Woman. I was Wonder Woman for this year. <laughs> I checked so, out those Instagram pics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking Ch- good. Check it baby. out at I am E G R. If you guys want to see, so uh, it's that a fun means costume. That Alicia was the second hottest Wonder Woman. Yeah, she was of the second. The night. Yeah, <laughs> she was. That's true. Her and I actually were the same costume. That's right. That was this past year. So it's it, a cute costume. It's a cute. Co- I love that costume. Um, and so, anyways, but um, and in, it's funny. So for like the first half of the party, all three of us were like, "What the hell is Drita?" <laughs> like I was like, "That was like she looks." 
this like a like uh, I don't know like somebody hangs out at a bowling alley or something? I can't like, believe they didn't address that sooner. I know because right? it was in a direct to camera. So why don't you just place that earlier yeah. in the episode? Like we're sitting there and I'm like, it was like what? we couldn't even concentrate because we're like, what is Drita? <laughs> it was like a cross between Adam's family and Britney Spears and Hit Me Baby. Yeah, like, it's a weird. It had a Britney feel. Yeah, it did. I, I was like, oh, what? But you know, and also like. All these women, you have so much money, like, and you go in your closet and you grab them. But that's kind of why I loved Rita. Uh -huh. She was like, "Hey, let my kids pick out what they want. I don't care." Like, I know. I loved that. I, I know. Once I heard what it was, I was like, "Oh, that's cute." But I just wish they would have said it sooner. Speaking <laughs> yeah. of Rita, though, at the Halloween party, I felt bad for her at one moment when she was talking about how she loved how Big Ange and Neil they dress I up know. together, and she was like, "Lee would never do that for me. He would just mm -hmm. be like, oh, 'Oh, I'm not doing that.'" I feel kind of bad. I'm always like. Yeah, she throws was... these little statements about Lee because we can never see him. He's I know. never on camera. So we have to, we we have an image of him or just a sense of him just based on what we hear and what we see from Drita talking about him. But it's like never anything really good. good. I know. You I know? just feel like she doesn't like him that much. <laughs> Even though she talks about how so much she's in love. I mean, the only thing that seems that's good about the guy is that they have good sex. But yeah. other than that, like, it's Yeah, like... and that she he is her children's father. father. So yeah. That, yeah. that is something. That's a big obviously. Thing. Yeah. Do you guys think that that's that big of a deal? Like to me, if I was with somebody, if I was married to somebody who wouldn't dress up with me, that would be like a, a thing for me. I would be like, what do you mean? Like if I really wanted him to, and he was just like, no. Yeah. And, and she was like, you would never do that. Yeah. And like, and obviously the partners were invited, the ones that are available to go. Mm -hmm. But and probably the cameras was something to do with it for me. But you wouldn't even like just, just like just. Do it. You just know, have just fun. Do it it's like I always feel like just, just get, get, get just get over yourself. Get over yourself and have fun. Just but, do it. Just do it. Get over yourself. Yeah. You women get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Anyway, all you so. men out there clearly don't. Um, Kevin, well, we need you to come into the show and stand yes. up for your kind. <laughs> we'll have him back soon. Um, but I did think the party looked kind of. Funny. It just didn't look like there were that many people there, and the people there. I mean, maybe because they were just in costume, they just looked weird. It was so bizarre. It was like they the kept being like, "This party is amazing." Yeah. I was like, "There's literally five of you." Like, <laughs> no. And a Halloween party at a funeral home. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, I do. Know why. I I know. I was thinking about it. I don't know if it's because it, of the filming. It just seemed like the lights were too for a party was like too uh, bright. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. And then people were awkwardly walking back and forth in the background. Yeah. And dancing. dancing weirdly. Yeah. Even like Natalie was dancing kind of weird. <laughs> I'm like by herself. I don't know. And like, where was her boyfriend? Oh, we didn't see him. Yeah. And if I was her boyfriend, I would not want her looking like that. Exactly. When I was not there. That's yeah. that's what I was wondering. Like. They were talking about moving in together and all that, and if she's walking around like that without him, oh, most guys wouldn't be too happy about that. Yeah, but I again, I just have to say that no shame to her. She looked awesome. Yeah, she did. Look I good. don't even care. Everybody's like she was wearing nothing. I don't care. Yeah, if you got it, flaunt it. You I, I think she looked good. I, I think she looked good. And I think was Drita. What did she say? If um, vampires had a strip club, she should be the doorman. I don't funny. even really know what that means, but I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it should be like the you know vampire strip club. Um, okay, so at this Halloween party, we see the text from uh, Natalie, I mean, from Renee to Natalie, and of course that gets the women all riled up, and they're all upset and everything, and we kind of talked about that. So, um, <clears throat> next, of course, um, the women, Drita and Big Ange, want to go and confront Renee. Which, obviously, they should, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm a big person. If you have a little issue with somebody, yeah. it just builds and builds. you got to say something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they Especially in that problem. group. Right. Yeah. So I thought that this was a good conversation for them to have. Uh, the only part that left me unsettled was when Renee turns to them and says, maybe you're better at pretending than I am. I mean, I would have lost it at that point. Drita if I looked Drita, like she almost lost if it. If I was Drita, who was very clearly, they were all trying to keep it down. Mm -hmm. But at that point, if I was Drita, I really would have lost it. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is with these girls, you don't say anything about being a rat, about being fake, kind of, and about accusing somebody and just all these negative, you just don't really kind of cross the line. And Renee 
is saying that don't do that to me for Natalie and Alicia. But now she's doing it to Drita, who's one of her girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I don't get because sometimes we watch the show and we look and we're like, I don't really know about the life, so I don't know how I would feel. But all these women do know. They know what to say and what not to say. Mm -hmm. You would know what you would want to be told to you. So Renee, why would you say that? Because yeah. if somebody said that to you, Renee would yeah. freak. you would freak. Out. I know. Maybe you're better at pretending <clears throat> than I am. That's code for you're faker than I am. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, it, it's and not, that's it, an insult. I think it's for, a backhanded it's, compliment. It's, yeah. It's, it's not a compliment. It's not a backhanded compliment at all. It's, it's a passive aggressive insult. Well, th that's really what it is. Yeah. But saying maybe you're better at yeah. is like, you know, yeah. your compliment. But no, it no. just was really, really rude, and it, and it bothered me a lot. And I wonder if we're going to see that coming in weeks. You know, yeah, I, I'm sure it's going to be like come delicious. Back. <laughs> That's the thing. You can't. You can. You, you can't say the word delicious, but you can say like, oh, maybe you're better pretending. Everybody knows what what you're saying by that. And, yeah. And for someone like Drita or Big Ange that prides themselves on being genuine and honest and confronting people, like to say something like that, like it'd be one thing if she was saying it to one of the cast members of Real Housewives of Beverly. Hills. Right. But like these women, like, n no, these yeah. women don't yeah. pretend. There's nothing about Drita that's fake. Yeah. And I would be insulted too, because like, I, I know me, I pride myself on being genuine and honest. If someone says that, it's like, why, why did you say that? Because especially since Renee knows Drita. Renee knows Big Ange. That's the thing. She knows these women. So why is she saying that to them? Oh, maybe you're better. Dude, you've known Big Ange for over 20 years. What do you mean by that? Yeah. But in all seriousness, you just asked a very good question, and I want to throw it back at you guys. Why did she say that? You know, why, why would she say that? If she knows, mm -hmm. if she knows what that means, then why did she say that? I think Renee is more calculated than we think mm -hmm. and I think the tweets and the text and I think it's all building up to a different Renee I think she's a lot she's hardened a lot to a lot of people because and I think she's maybe stay, staying quiet but she really like she, well she is staying quiet but she is hurt by Big Ange and Drita not sticking up for her and I think she wants mm -hmm. to do just do these little digs she doesn't want it to explode but I think she wants to just put these digs out so they kind of know that She's not. That, she's not that's what I think too. I think she's. I think she's so pissed at them for not sticking up for her mm -hmm. and not taking her side over Natalie. So she's throwing these digs out there, and she's that. That's her way of kind of retaliating in a way. I have to bounce back for a second because we've never done a show together, Charlotte. But you know that I love my quotes mm -hmm. and, I, and I love to give them. So yeah. just back to Drita for a minute when she says, "I have a question for the audience actually because." It was so good that I wanted to put a car through a <laughs> yeah. whole wall. What does that mean? I don't know. It was so good that I wanted to put a car through a whole wall. Yeah. Well, and what, was she talking about that with method the method man? man? What does that mean? Like, I, I don't <laughs> even know... Is is that when something really good? I don't think good? I'd want to. I don't think I'd ever want to put a, a car, car through, through a whole, just a wall, a whole wall, wall, an entire wall, not but like part of a wall. She loves adrenaline, so maybe trying to think in, in her mind, maybe that's what she's thinking. I don't she would know. get a kind of rush from. I have no idea though. That and Natalie going, I got too much class for you. Yeah. My favorite moments of tonight. What did she say? Okay. What did she say that? Okay. The very Wait. top of the episode. Uh, she's to Alicia. She's saying that. to Alicia, and she's like, yo, Alicia, this is what you should say next time you talk to Renee. Yeah. I got too much class for you. <laughs> so I'm like, going to beat your ass. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, beat your ass, bitch. <laughs> I'd love to see uh, that. Yeah, huh? I would love All of them like. You know, show they probably will at the end of this episode. Yeah, season. I'm, no, I'm nervous. We're getting another love moment. We're no, we're gonna get nothing compares not, to nothing love. That, that big, woman but was physical. Yeah, she, was really, she was really <laughs> honest to God, crazy. She was These other women, like you know, if you got a scale of one to ten, they're on the higher end of yeah, scale. Love seven. was like a, yeah, love was a, off, off the charts. The charts. She, off the charts. <laughs> like scary. Yeah, really scary. Well, that's why she's off the show. <laughs> like she was like <laughs> so scary. They had to take her off of the yeah. show. Yeah, I think she. Was like, like, I will kill somebody. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. <laughs> she was like legitimately crazy, like yeah. bona fide crazy. Oh. Like, I like, don't miss you. I'm sorry, love. I don't miss you. I don't you either. made me nervous at night. I know. <laughs> I had nightmares about you. I know. I. She's like. She's so scary. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, um, 
Yeah. Okay. I think I think we covered pretty much everything. Anything else? Any other quotes? No. Roxy? No. no that was it. I love you, AJ. Yeah. Oh. Come back to me. Yeah. Roxy, for those of you who don't know, had a huge crush on AJ last season. Yeah. And so I should be saying, you know what? They should not move yeah, into Yeah, what are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing for supporting that relationship? I, I changed my mind. I can judge. Oh, yeah. my God. She's not the right girl for you. <laughs> AJ, if you're listening, Roxy my heart is, is here. Yeah, she's an amazing girl. Such Way better than your girlfriend. <laughs> we actually right. don't know that. Yeah. No, no shade to her. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up the episode. What about uh, predictions for next week? I know that we're seeing more of Nicole, which I just don't understand. Oh. Uh, it's because Renee goes to her attorney, and I feel really bad because especially after doing the Susan Pinsky podcast with her, mm -hmm. she was saying how she, and last week I came on and told you guys that she was saying how actually petrified she is mm -hmm. um, of Junior. And that, when any woman says that about a man, makes me really feel for them, you mm -hmm. know? Like, no matter who you are, what you've gone through, when you are a woman and you are incredibly physically afraid of a man, that's... It gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. And she briefly said it tonight um, with when she was checking the voicemails, and she was like, oh, I have a, a call from Natalie. And then Nicole said, oh, do you have a voicemail? And she was like, the only person I care about is if it's from... Um, Junior. Yeah, sorry. Well, well she said that head. she saw there was a call on her phone from a prison. Right. And she's like, how could that be? Mm -hmm. It couldn't be Junior. And they glazed over it. They yeah. never yeah. actually said who it was. I think that means that we're coming back to yeah. it, you know, because they, we couldn't get there this episode. But since she mentioned the prison call, I bet that Isn't it was. Isn't her dad still in prison? <laughs> could have been him. I don't know. Yeah. He must be. He's incarcerated. Yeah. Yeah. I always says at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that they do that because I'm I like, do too. who's what, where? <laughs> yeah. I love uh, the, and the, the way they like open up the scene. Boom, boom. Um, AJ, <laughs> 19. <laughs> we know we're going to get cracked up at home. <laughs> oh, my God. All you guys are home being like, you guys don't know. This is his name. This is I what know. he's in jail for. I'm like, oh. Scary. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Okay, guys. So, okay, yeah. So next week we see Renee. Oh, and the ladies' attorney. lunch. Yeah, and Renee doesn't show up. So I get a sense that they're building it up that that Drita and Renee are going to have some kind of showdown. She did show up though, didn't she? And no, then, no, no, she, she doesn't didn't. show up for that. She ends up going to coffee or whatever with Natalie. That yes. was separate. Oh, yes. And Drita was the one who invited Renee and said she was coming, so she looked like a jackass. So Drita was pissed. Uh -huh. yeah. Which I understand because Renee, if you're not showing up, say you're not coming. Yeah. You know, don't ever stand your friends up no, ever. That's the worst. Um, and then the final thing is that we see that Renee says to Natalie, I cannot be your friend. I know. Well, I think that's clear by this point. Yeah, I, think, yeah, I don't think that's any that's surprise. No surprise. She's just, like, throwing it out just there. Why is Renee saying that? I don't like you, and I can't be your friend. Like, if it's known, just let it be just, known. You don't need to finalize it with those words. It's just... And I don't get the sense that Natalie wants to be friends with Renee either. Right. So I think they're maybe it's a, a, a mutual. As they say tonight, yeah. let boy go on to be boy go on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on up. Okay, guys. Well, where can we find you? At Shaw Broadbent. At Roxy Stryer. And I am your host, Erica Garcia Rojas. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at I am EGR. And check out my clothing line, rallybabe.com. It's amazing. Woo! <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for listening. See you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Bitches. Bitches. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.